my topic is an organization designed for product management. And basically, my goal now is to give you some kind of an idea of what kind of questions I'm looking at in the research. And this means that we need to go like, like an onion, onion, but in reverse order, that we start with small and try to get to uh, kind of an, to perspective that's not necessarily the, the most typical one, uh, one when you look at the organizations. So I do entrepreneurship research, but there's many things that you can look at the entrepreneurship. So there are those that, and a lot of our attention in talking about entrepreneurs goes to entrepreneurs, so individuals. But there are also then the startups, which are usual ones, but there are also other levels. So if we think about individuals and try to see that how individuals are different in terms of thinking of turning and starting on a startup or starting to be an entrepreneur, there are individual traits, which goes more to us the directions of the presentation that we already heard about the, how you have the, how you do uh, imagine of uh, neural functions of the brain. That would be that direction of the scale. And then also there is this kind of a halfway between somebody being an entrepreneur and not yet starting a company, but being very entrepreneurial. So that's more of a behavioral level. But then when we have startups, we can also think that, okay, what kind of startups there are, how one single startup, uh, how successful it is. But we can also think that what kind of startups we start to have. And that's more towards where I try to take you. And I'm especially asking that kind of question that now that we see a lot of startups going to same place and same building. So I, as a researcher, I'm thinking that's extremely interesting that why do they flock together? Uh, why one startup is not equally happy in that office and the other one there, but they seem to attract each other and go to the same places. And that's kind of a population level phenomena. That's where we are going. But first, because the topic is product management, uh, let's start with basics. So this is an engineer's perspective on design. So bear with me. So there's two things. So if we think of uh, uh, coffee mug, in terms of design, so everything that is built, a design is built into it. And my dichotomy here is that it basically we can look at it from two ways. So what, are, what it does and where it needs to fit. So if this holds, usually probably warm uh, liquid, then it does its function. But this here, the uh, handle of the cup, that's actually unnecessary for the function of holding the liquid. That's an interface. And an interface, you can see that if we would offer this for rabbits, the interface would be totally futile, or then if you would mess up with the interface, it wouldn't make sense anymore. So there's two things. It needs to hold liquid, but it needs to also fit something. Products, when we talk about, they are not just one instance of a uh, uh, coffee mug, but it's the class of mugs that then are made the large, large volumes. And that implies that there's also other handles than the very physical one to any product. Uh, I'm going to go through three of these. One has to do with the users, one with the production, and one then with the business and competition. These are three different handles that get built into the design of the product, although you not, wouldn't necessarily see it when you're looking at and using it, because you have one, just one single perspective. But these three perspectives. Let's start with, first with the production. So any product is basically the uh, output of a production system. So on the left-hand side is an <clears throat> my humble uh, attempt of doing ramen, which I think when portrayed here against something that I bought from a restaurant, looks better. At least I think that way. But the other one, the one that I did, it's not a product. It is ramen. It's on the level of the ramen niche or ramen hood, it's the same thing. But in the level of products, the mine attempt is not a product, while the other one is. And the reason is that it's the output of a production system. There's something that can do a lot of these kind of things. But as you can see, there's probably things that you need to design in this bowl to make it repeatable. Uh, probably skimming some of the ingredients, perhaps it seems like a bit lighter version, more of the probably very good tasting uh, liquid going with it. So there's decisions that go into it that we don't necessarily see when we consume it. Okay, so the product needs to fit the production. The second one is this magic that the user does. Um, this is something that messes up usually the engineering students. 
things get soft. Uh, when you think that, okay, I just manufactured a shovel, then the user goes to do something that actually transforms the shovel, not into the shovel, but actually a key, what is this? Kind of a key holder, so you wouldn't lose them. So it magically transforms the product that you intended to be a uh, uh, shovel to something completely different. This happens also if we want to repeat the magic. We can do it that way. Behold, it's not anymore a coffee mug, it's a pen holder. And this is what user can do with any product. Of course, with the limitations of the product itself. You can do anything, but there are limits. Uh, but the user, you need to understand the user and whatever the user is kind of trying to do with the product. So that's also designed, needs to be designed in the product. The third component, the third handle that the product needs to be, have is that it needs to be, what business, uh, from the business perspective, viable to produce. There's this excellent product, Nyhtökaura, uh, no sponsorship involved, involved here, that this continued to exist for a couple of months during the last summer. There's nothing wrong with the product itself. It works in the way that the users are to be using it. The production, the technology it produces worked in a way. But what it failed was the business model behind it in order to sustain the production of the product failed to go on as it did. So Pauli owned it, make about 50 million in losses, sold it to Valio, and they tried to implement it differently. So what they are bringing into the design of this product it's not, it doesn't have to do anything to do with the user. It doesn't have that much to do with the production. It has to do how they design the business model behind the system. So once we have a product, it needs to bring all these three elements together. All right. So that's part of the design. So first layer of the onion. So now we go on the organization level. So it's not just anymore bunnies and coffee cups. It's the bunny baristas pouring the coffee, doing the, the how, holding the organization together behind the single product. So when we start to add dimensions to it, there's stuff that needs to happen in order for organizations to get these kind of products done. So there are, for example, customer research. You need to know what they intend to do, what kind of a gimmicky tricks they kind of have for your product coming, what kind of uh, customers you are thinking about, how to market to them, what kind of branding you will use, uh, sales and marketing. And then also, like, what you actually would do from them. So what kind of you, uh, product design it would be, uh, and how to produce that development. And then the thing about the bigger picture, that how the, what's the business doing behind it. So there's all kind of elements. You kind of need to do all of these, but hard of hardly any organization actually focuses on all of these. So there's a bit of a different, uh, once again, needs for different handles in terms of what organization should focus on. You can more focus on the needs of the market, which means that then you need to have a bigger thing probably going with the marketing. Or then you might have a situation where it's more need for product development. Or then there are needs for efficiency. So if you take three examples of this, something like oranges, it's a produce. There's a bit of a branding going on there, but the key thing is that how do you make a lot of oranges in a given field and then transport them? They are kind of interchangeable to, to a degree uh, but if you think about the sneakers, to produce a sneaker, or the actually companies that we all buy sneakers from are not producing the sneakers. So the product that they are mainly selling us is kind of some kind of a shoe with the heavy, heavy branding and identity building. But for that, you need a lot of things happening in the marketing departments. And then if you are doing consumer space shoots, I don't know what kind of business that would be, but it probably would involve a lot of product development. So, when you are designing an organization, in order to design the products, there's a couple of handles that there could be. It could be very uh, market-oriented product management system. It could be very product development-oriented product management system. Or it could be very cost-competition-driven uh, product management system. All right. So now we have two layers of the onion. the core product. Then we have the organization. And now the third question is that where do then come new organizational forms? An organization decides. So if there are these the three focuses that we could see currently, these are all called product management, then funnily enough, there's a lot of people who are starting to, including me, to draw these three circles. But how about if we don't think these three things 
as separate components, but they somehow need to be integrated. This is not a new thought, but this is increasingly something that is happening. And the key here is that it seems that some companies have taken to themselves to be very good, not on these three uh, kind of interfaces, but thinking about how do we get this all together and building their organization in the middle of it. And now this comes to the part that I'm, as a researcher, I'm very interested. So, uh, when we look at the organizational populations, so what is what type of a companies we have, then the, these are not unlike rabbits. We can use the ideas and elements from the basic evolutionary uh, uh, biology. So there is variation in the population, there's some kind of a selection pressure, and that causes adaptation. So which things in the rabbit population make some rabbits more fit to the environment, those traits uh, continue and become uh, po uh, potentially dominant in the population. The same thing, what kind of variation and especially selection pressure affects organizations so that some of organizations seem to be fitter to the business environment so that the number of that type of an organization gets bigger and bigger. So, which basically means that if there is such a selection pressure, then organization, basically the designs and the organization populations reflect their environments. So when we flip this, so if there is a population changing, then we know that there's something happening in the environment. So if we have a new organizational form, we know that something has happened in the environment. And now my question is that what that is, how come, why such a way of organizing has suddenly become very dominant, especially in companies that aim for very high growth. There's some similarities. They are all high tech tend to be. It's easy and coding, coding based. So there's something happening with the technology that drives the evolution of the companies to the direction that this type of a product management becomes more prolific. So now in terms of what kind of things then I do in terms of education and research, uh, one very interesting one, which is seems to be very interesting for the students especially, is how products are managed. So this is a new profession that is emerging. So what kind of tools and processes and basically information goes into that? So in the middle ground, also very interesting as a research, is how and when any single organization should and basically in, to what extent could adapt to the situation if the environment changes. So for, in terms of if the startup is growing, so in what state should start up, create an organizational function. So they actually hire somebody to do this stuff. Usually it's the founders that do the product up until the point that things don't just work anymore. Then they bring somebody who's professional on that. Uh, timing of that point, who they hire, where these people come from, and how they actually, as an organization, start to create a new function into in, in, uh, to themselves. This is actually the point where the rabbits and organizations uh, are not interrelatable. We as an organism, we cannot change our parts, but organizations which are consisting of biological organisms can trade these biological organisms to ones that know full stack coding, for example. And then the final one is the kind of the most research oriented. So what kind of properties in the technology landscape have changed that have created this kind of a change in organizational form? Is it Basically, basic contingency theory um, for those that are keen on those, that kind of things. But these things kind of come, for example, questions that how team compositions uh, reflect the different kind of technology stacks that are out there. Okay, I hope that now with this one, you have a kind of glimpse of in the whole scale of very more small scale molecular things to different kind of a systems, to a broader systems of systems, and how those might evolve and show some kind of interesting properties for research. I kind of conclude with the idea that this about is kind of a way to think about organization design for product management. Thank you.